Hello, algebra students. So these examples aren't that tricky. However, I am putting together two different GED skills in this into one problem. So I think doing it together is a good idea. So here we go. Translate each sentence into an equation. That's the first GED skill I was talking about. Writing equations often comes up on the GED. And then it says, then solve the equation. You'll definitely, definitely, definitely be solving equations on your GED. Now, will you have problems where you do both of them together? I don't know. You might only have them separate, but either way, you are going to have problems where they're both together in college and they both come up. So we might as well review them both at once. So here we go. First one, the sum of a number K and 7.7 .7, or 7 and 7 tenths is 1.9 or 1 and 9 tenths. All right, the sum of a number k and 7.7. .7. Let's start with that point or that part. The sum, we learned that a sum was an addition expression or its simplified answer as you guys think of it. So some kind of an addition expression and then the two numbers that they tell us are the ones that we're adding. The sum of a number k and seven and seven tenths. So a number K and seven and seven tenths. There we go, got that first part. Now this part is 1.9. If it is something, that's another way of saying it's equal to that thing. So the sum of a number K and 7.7 .7 is it equals 1.9. That was the first thing we were asked to do, write an equation. Next thing is to solve that equation. Let me get myself some room. So k plus 7.7 .7 equals 1.9. All right, to solve this, I want to get k alone. It's not alone right now. It has that 7 and 7 tenths hanging out. It's adding, so I will do the opposite. I'll subtract to get rid of it. I'll do it on both sides. Adding 7.7 .7 and subtracting 7.7 .7 cancel. k is alone just like I wanted. And mixing together decimals and negatives might be a little much, especially while we're trying to master new algebra skills. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this in my calculator. 1.9 minus 7.7. .7, and I get negative 5.8. And now K is alone. So that is the solution to that equation. K equals negative 5.8. Awesome. Next example here, the product of a number M and eight is 32. Oh, look at me reviewing all the basic ops vocab. Like I want you to remember it. <laughs> the product of a number M and eight. What am I saying? When I say product, well, sum is an addition expression, but product is a multiplication expression. Now, I suppose you could write it like this, M times eight, but I wouldn't because that's not how mathematicians write it. And in fact, in the land of algebra, when you start writing something like that, it actually doesn't necessarily mean multiplication. So the better way to write that, remember, when we're multiplying together a number and a letter is to write the number first. We call that the coefficient. And then the letter or the variable second. And that's how we usually do multiplication with variables, with letters. So there's the product of a number m and 8, and it is negative 32. So that's the first step. We wrote that equation, not too bad. And now we're going to solve it. In order to solve it, I have to take away that 8 that's multiplying. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both expressions, the left and the right hand side. Multiplying and dividing by 8 are opposites. They cancel. M is alone, just like I wanted. And again, you can do it in your calculator if you'd like. But negative 32 divided by 8 is negative 4. And so equation is 8m is equal to negative 32. Solution is m is equal to negative 4. Finally, the quotient of a number t divided by 11 is negative 4. There's definitely a clue here that quotient is a division expression. And I just wanted to use divided by so it was clear what order we were going in. So the quotient of a number t divided by 11 is negative 4. See, not so bad, you guys. Look at that. And that is the first step there. I have my equation and time to solve. Don't panic at the side of a fraction. Remember it, what it means. You just wrote it. It means divide. I can get rid of it by doing the opposite. I will multiply the entire thing by 11. 
I'm a mathematician, not a third grader, so I use parentheses with that 11 up multiplying with the entire expression. And then whatever I do on the left-hand side, I'll do the same on the right. I'm going to balance my change. Multiplying t by 11 and dividing t by 11 are opposites. They cancel. t is going to be alone just like I wanted. And there is the math to do. Negative 4 times 11 is negative 44. Beautiful. So the equation was t over 11 is equal to negative 4. And the solution there is t is equal to negative 44. Great. See, not so bad. Not so bad as it seemed. Maybe it was a little overwhelming, but we totally handled that and you're going to do just fine on the GED and college if you can tackle things like that. All right, you guys, proud of you. Happy learning.